Hello gamers, geeks and gays, my name is Sturks, welcome to the Outer Wilds, and if you haven't noticed, it's heckin' sunny! Like, well, I don't know what's going on here, it's, it's, it is May, to be fair, but I'm not used to the sunshine, and you're not used to seeing the sunshine, I usually close the curtains to control the lighting, but it is so warm today that I can't do that, because if I do that, this room is going to turn into an oven, I'm going to bake, and we don't want baked Sturks in the morning. That would not smell particularly pleasant. Anywho, as far as Out of Wilds goes today, we're going to be doing a chill episode. We're going to go to Giant's Deep and we're going to go see Gabbro again. So I feel like it's been a while since we spoke to him, tell him the things that we've learnt, see if there's anything else that we can find. And also, I might, if we have time, have a, a little bit more of a look around Timber Hearth because there's definitely stuff there that we've missed. So this is another one of those Smell the Roses episodes. I'm probably going to do this every five or six episodes or so just to shake things up um, and so we don't kind of rush through the game too, too much. So without further ado, let's get into it. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. In fact, I know most of you have been enjoying this, the episode so far. The series is doing really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, it's fantastic to see you guys engaging. The only downside is over half of you guys aren't even subscribed. So if you do like Out Wilds, come join the family. I'm going to be doing this in the long run. There's going to be like someone estimated, I think like 50 odd episodes of just the story. Um, I will be doing the DLC and I'm going to be doing a lore series afterwards, which I'm really, really hyped about. I have some fantastic creative ideas for that um, and what we're doing. But self promo out of the way. Let's get into the game. So what, what did I just say we we're going to do? I said we're going to go to Giants Deep, but before that, I really want to go and have a look around the um, museum. Someone said that it looked like I missed a bit of the museum. I didn't think that I had, but apparently I might have done, or it looked like I had done. I don't know if I did like a funny cut or something in the first episode or second episode. Um, so I'll go up there now while we have the time. I will double check that I've seen everything, because I do like museums. Um, I love museums. Anytime I go on a holiday, um, with any like, if I go on a holiday with my partners or with my family, um, it's always on the agenda that I have to go to a museum of sorts. So I just went down to Cornwall this year, which is like the southeast, southwest. I'm bad at directions. Southwest of England. Um, and it's got heavy like maritime history and there was a bunch of really cool museums so let's go and have a look because I don't know what I would have missed the, the statue's still here maybe I missed things like this oh out of wilds benches founding members clockwise from top left hornfells gossan Slate. Wait, clockwise from top left. So, Hornfells, Gosan, Slate, and Feldspar. So, Feldspar is the bottom left. And Esker. Who's Esker? Big thanks to these additional founding members of Out of Wilds Ventures, without whom we would never have gone off the ground. Are these like early access supporters or devs or if you know who these people are can you just put in the comments for me so I know and I'm gonna go through every single one okay there we go I, I don't like skipping any kind of credits um, because especially when I'm doing content creation, anytime I've done a Twitch game, I've all like a Twitch stream and I've been playing a game, I've always got to the end of the credits before I end the stream. Because people, you know, deserve to be appreciated for their work. Out of Worlds Ventures, Timber Hearts first and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Felspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. How does one unintentionally get launched into space? They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Atom Rock. 
So Feldspar is a pretty big deal. Have these guys got anything new to say? Um, we have seen this before. Yeah, okay, so we've had this conversation with them before. Right. Museum. I don't feel like I did miss anything in here. I feel like we at least had a look at everything. Let's have a look. The radio, the radio tower here on Timber Hearth was built to receive transmissions from our deep space satellite. And to this day, still houses the first ever photos taken of the entire solar system. These photos were made possible by the deep space satellite's unusual vertical orbit that carries it high above and below the plane of our solar system. Thanks to a recent upgrade, the Deep Space Satellite is now responsible for generating the real-time system map used by our newest astronauts. I like how there's an in-game explanation for how we have a map like we do. Also, apologies if we have seen these things before. I'm just being, you know, extra precautious, taking a bit of extra time. We have the time. We have time for the first time ever in the Outer Wilds. Okay, we definitely missed this. What, what are they? Watch closely. These balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level. So what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the Atorox gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. That's... Really cool. I like that. Uh... I know what you are. Um, we've seen the funky rock. Play that funky music, by boy. And I read about the supernova. We now know what that is, though. That is for the like the warp mechanics that the, the Nomai use. The warp towers, the warp stations. We'll call them warp stations. I think that's what I would call them. And that's on the Ember Twin. We've been there. That's the escape shuttle on the Ember Twin. I like this now because we're actually kind of seeing things that we know about. As before, this was just like, ah, that's pretty. That's not pretty though. This anglerfish specimen is found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to the dark bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. See, now that should have told me everything I need to know about this thing. Dark place. Traditionally, creatures that live in dark places are blind. Has this game been telling me things from the beginning, but it's just not gone in my head because it didn't feel obvious enough? Maybe? No, my technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds Ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and in useful ways. For example, the Lil Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. That explains it. So that's how we're doing the whoop. Oh no. What well, you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell them their skulls that they possessed antlers and, quite unusually, only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nomayan ancestors. It's not clear where they originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. I suppose that's something that I don't know if I may be getting the wrong idea with this game. I feel like the more I'm playing this game, the less I'm worried about exploring space. And the more I'm trying to figure out what happened. And I'm guessing that's the intention. I'm guessing that's not just me being an inquisitive boy. Um, I feel like I'm trying to find what happens to these people. Because as I kind of touched on in the last episode, whatever killed these guys off happened, like, so quick. To all of them, everywhere. But we're okay. So what happened? It couldn't be in, like, 
a solar system wide thing that killed all life because otherwise we wouldn't be here, surely. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomite also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered in Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomite art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether Nomite originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among the other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? So, we know they came on the vessel. We know that now. I also don't know if we actually read this. We're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says she's calibrating the device. Won't take long. Fortunately, the Astral Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. I've seen that emblem elsewhere. And I don't know where. I think it was in... Was it the Hanging City, maybe? Or was it the Sunken City? I, think, I feel like it was one of the two. This piece of Know My Writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, no my text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. That's quite cool. Okay, so, is this everything in the museum? I feel like I have seen everything in the museum now. Surely. Right? I've seen everything in the museum? I have. Cool. Fantastic. I was not losing my mind. Okay, so there was a few things that we did miss, to be fair. Right, let's jump on the shuttle, and let's go and find Gabro, because if we find anything new, we need to go back and tell him. Tell them. I'm going to be try and be careful with the pronouns of the characters, and I know some people really don't care, but I made the mistake early on of referring to Rebek as a him, um, and that's just because in my head canon. Rebeck reminds me a lot of myself. Um, there's a lot of characteristics that I feel like we kind of share and I fell in love with the character So I kind of projected onto the character But I have noticed every single character in this game is referred to by neutral Pronouns and I love that um, it leaves it up to your imagination If you see them as a she if you see them as a them if you see them as a he I feel like that's a real kind of cool way of doing it Um in fact, I wanted to, I'm still in the process of trying to write a fantasy, like a dark fantasy world. And if I ever get around to writing the novel, as opposed to just lore, that's something that I really want to do. I want to make a point of trying to be careful and leave it up to your imagination as to what you, what you see people as. Because I feel like that's a much more interesting and free way to kind of do fiction. Um, so yeah, I am going to try and be more careful. Just uh, apologies if I do slip up. It's not intentional. Um, but that's a story for a different. That's a story for a different day. So, let us try and find our favourite stoner, Gabbro. And I'm convinced Gabbro is a stoner. Right? You you can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna touch down, which I'm not a big fan of. Right. Now, I appreciate this is meant to be a chill, kind of smell the roses episode. However, I think we can all agree, Giant's Deep is not, by any means, a particularly relaxing place. Um... But someone suggested we go look at the beaches and, and whatnot here, so we're going to do that. Let's not forget to put on our spacesuits. That would be a really disappointing end. Um, and now, this way was clear. I know this way was clear. Yes, it is. Hi, Gabro, I'm back. I was hoping you'd be back. Something really weird is going on. We're definitely in a time loop. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Cool. You're taking this pretty well. <laughs> right back at you. Personally, I like new experiences and I've never been in a time loop before. Well, I don't 
think I've been in a time loop before this one, but then it's not like I can know that for sure. So it looks like you and I are the only ones who know we're in a time loop. And even if you tell them about it, no one remembers by the next loop. What's with that? Maybe it's because we both made some seriously intense eye contact with the my statue. Funny you should mention that, Gavro. I'm seeing my memories replay each time I die, just like I did when the Nomai statue on the beach opened its eyes and looked at me, so maybe no glowing statue, no time loop awareness. I think that's going to be my leading theory, but if you find out anything new about the statues or the time loop, let me know, okay? I'll be here. Okay, we definitely found a bunch of stuff. So I reached the inside of the statue island. So Nomai created those head statues to record memories. Yeah, I could see the Nomai doing that. Not sure what for, but it seems like they're a sort of thing. Do you think the statues are recording our memories then? Because I remember that on one on the beach looked to be funny. That must be my memory friend. Memory friend, I love that. Right, I am also, while we're here, gonna make sure I've tagged Gabro. Hey, my time body's back. Oh, wait. Uh, I said it clicked on the same thing. Right, found something. I found what happened to the Orbs Probe Cannon. Whoa, that's the cannon breaking apart at the start of each time loop? For real? Did you figure out why? Over enthusiasm. It's kind of scary how much that sounds like something Slate or Feldspar would do. Pretty surprised to know my built something that actually broke. Come to think of it though, broke might be the wrong word because it looks like the Orbital Pro Cannon is still firing successfully at the beginning of each time loop. That's a good point. And I don't think I've ever really touched on that. How is it still operating? Gabro, how is it still operating at the beginning of each time loop? Gabro, tell me. Did the sounds change then? Because we're in space? Or is that purely because he's playing... Is it purely because they're playing like a higher register? I don't know. Also, I'm not sure if that counts as a clarinet or a flute. It looks more like a clarinet. But I appreciate old school flutes were maybe like that as well. Okay, so, found something new. I found a photo of you inside the old radio tower. Nice! Did I look busy in it? I hope I looked busy. Must have been from the time Hornfell sent me to check on the deep space satellite. They thought old Spacey might be malfunctioning, but I couldn't find a single thing wrong with it. Which is probably how it got a shot of my beautiful, behelmeted face, come to think of it. I always thought it was kind of sweet that the best way to find old Spacey is to use a map that's generated by the satellite itself, isn't it? Like it's inviting us to visit. Good old deep space satellite, always making sure we know where we're going. Inviting us to visit? Should I go visit? But also, why does that sound a bit like... The, I'm not saying the satellite is the eye, and I don't think our satellite will be the eye because we built it long after, you know, the Nomai, but it, it, the parallels... I'm loving the parallels. I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, though. Um, I have a... Oh, I do have a map, yeah. Why did Hornfels think it was broken? Don't know, Hornfels probably told me why, but Hornfels tells me a lot of things, and sometimes I tune out. Or pretend there's a signal interference and I can't hear them. Best guess says the deep space satellite must have sent in behind some weird pictures, but like, what's considered weird for a satellite, you know? Anyway, if you want to visit old spacey, fastest ways to jump in your ship and use the solar system map to lock onto the satellite, same as you would any astral body. We can visit the satellite? Sounds pretty cool. Uh, okay, actually, never mind. I do want to tell them that I found the ship. Oh, cool, so it's floating in the ocean, huh? It looked like it was having a good time. Capro is just in a constant state of just vibing. Just always, always just chilling, just vibing. Having a good time, you know. 
And speaking of, let's go roast some marshmallows, I think. I don't know if there's any more else I really want to go look at here. As much as I like doing the, uh, the chill sightseeing episodes, I do feel like there's not a huge amount of sightseeing here. Like, it is one thing that I... So I am a mariner at heart, right? I want to go to sea at some point. I do. And I feel like part of the reason I'm drawn to the sea is the same reason why it's terrifying. You know? I feel like one of the things that's beautiful about the sea and just like nature and everything is it is so scary. You know, like the mass, you know, you can't really master the sea. Um, there's, there's a lot of sayings to do with it, but essentially, you know, it's a fickle master, just be careful. And I feel like the same can be said for nature. Like, just, just look at this. Just, well, I didn't realise the island moved that quickly either, but just look, like, the beauty of something that is so untamed and so untamable. Like, it's a wonder the Nomai ever settled here, because this place, to me, I would say this is just inhospitable. Like, yes, there are islands. Yes, there's some limited atmosphere at the islands. But the weather... This place is not fit for life. Not above the surface, anyway, but the Nomai managed to make it work. And I don't know if that's maybe more of a testament to, like, the Nomai than it is anything else. Oh my god, there's like little fish skeletons in the stew. I did the sardines. We've got packed sardines, guys. That's interesting. I wonder what the main Harthian diet is. Because to me, I, I don't believe I've seen... Oh, here we go. I don't believe I've seen any large bodies of water. Uh, not the dark bramble. I do not like the dark bramble. I do not like the dark bramble. But I, I don't believe that I've seen any large bodies of water on Timber Hearth. So I don't really know. Don't really know. Let's get in the ship and find somewhere pretty to watch the end of the loop. Oops. Even if it is just in space. Let's get comfortable. Let's take off the suit. And let's go find somewhere pretty to just watch it all end. And just appreciate this absolute beauty of a game. I'm not even going to turn off my UI for you guys. Because I can do that. But just... I have never been more in awe of anything than this game. And I find myself repeatedly lost for words. It's so nice to be able to reach the end of the loop and not be stressed. Just to kind of accept it. You know? I love this game. I love everything about it. I love the lore. I love the world. I love the gameplay. I love the community. Well, we've spoken to Gabbro about everything we know now. We've had a look through the museum. And I have seen everything now. I promise. If I haven't, let me know. Because <laughs> there's every possibility I missed something. 
How is that still firing? That's what I want to know. Because I believe it was... Who was it who was running the probe cannon? I need to double check. I might need to re-watch the old videos or go and go back there and have a quick read. Because I can't remember who was operating the cannon. But they're all dead. So unless they set like a timer. But why would they set a timer? Because the whole point of that probe is to try and find the eye of the universe. Right? It's to try and find the eye of the universe. The gnome, that's what the gnome I wanted. So why would they set a timer? Because they're not here anymore. You know, they're not present. They're all dead. So what? It's not making any sense. There's something about that probe cannon that is starting to kind of rub me up the wrong way. And I can't quite put my finger on it. Something doesn't feel right. And it's something that's been right in front of us this whole time. And I've just kind of ignored it. But I'm guessing... No, no, I'm not even guessing. I know for a fact. I, I still need to go to the Owl Rock. Remind me, next time we do a chill episode, we're off to the Atle Rock, okay? Remind me. Next time, we're going to go back to the Ember Twin. There's a lot of stuff there that's left untouched that I need to explore. And by extension, the Ash Twin while we're there. Uh, I'm going to go and enjoy the sun now, guys. You guys, just do what you guys do best. Keep being amazing. Um, if you haven't already, by the way, we have a community Discord. I put the link now in the bio um, of the YouTube channel so you can come and join us. You can come say hi to myself um, and you can join the community and be more active because I really do love that about what this YouTube channel is turning into and how interactive it's becoming and how much of it is starting to feel like a community. I'm recognising names or recognising people and I can't thank you enough. In the meantime, though, guys, as usual, I have been Sturks. You, you've been amazing. I'll catch you all later for the next episode.